do 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 What images did that piece of music conjure up in your mind? Don't be afraid to say it. I can promise you that you are not alone in your thoughts. Wondering how a nine-note riff came to be a ubiquitous shorthand for saying East Asian, specifically Chinese. More importantly, how it became to act as a marker for an Asian stereotype in most pop culture. Well, I'm not going to explain that here, except to say, are you really surprised? It is kind of like how the term China became shorthand for ceramics, specifically but not limited to porcelain. China wear had, had at first a literal meaning of wares from China, but was soon shortened to China and became a common name for the material. So what happens if you search the term China in a museum database? You get all the objects made in the actual country of China, as well as a range of objects being made globally. The classic blue and white Ming porcelain design has especially been fused in the collective consciousness as being synonymous with China and wealth. Think of the ubiquitous film scenes of the teetering or heavens forbid shattering Ming vase, followed by the understanding that a great social faux pas has occurred. But how does this all relate back to the Manchester Art Gallery and the classification system? Well, if we continue with the Ming vase, it reveals excuse the pun, cracks in the classification system. In this mini rant, I hope to shatter, metaphorically, how the linguistic taxonomies have built both a very unstable but effective way of perpetuating coloniality. Here are three ceramic objects within the Manchester Art Gallery collections. They all appear in your search, if you search the word China. One is a Ming vase, grouped as non-Western and ceramics. The other one is a Chongzhen vase, also classified as non-Western and ceramics. The final one is a Delftware object, simply grouped as ceramics. So then what purpose does the classifying nomenclature of non-Western serve with, within the Manchester Art Gallery collection? Let's think this through. Surely it must refer to geography, used to group objects from the eastern part of the world. Good guess, but nope. This spear is from Alaska, and it too is classified as non-Western. But Alaska is as far west you can go before becoming east again. So apparently it's not about geography. Quick note. Yes, I am aware of the absurdity of using terms such as east and west in such a way, as this is all based on geographically centering Europe. Two. Let's not give up on geography just yet. This basket is from Nigeria. Yet again, it is categorized as non-Western, which makes no sense from a geographic standpoint, as it is on, as Nigeria is on relatively a similar longitude as the United Kingdom. The geographic directional term apparently has nothing to do with actual geography. Alas, it must mean non-Western in terms of not having epistemological and ideological foundations in quote-unquote Western civilization. Duh, why didn't I think of that? Um, but wait a minute, can it be really as neat as that? The Chongzhen vase from China has a depiction of European musicians. The Delftware from the Netherlands has depictions of, ost- of ostensibly Chinese figures. So the object we stereotype as Chinese is actually Dutch, and the one thought of as European is actually Chinese. I'm really glad those cultural differences were made really clear through the classification of non-Western. The musical riff, just like the figure on the Delftware, are both figments of the Eurocentric imagination, a pastiche that represents quote-unquote otherness in general not a particular culture group. It is important to note that the classification of non-Western in the Manchester Art Gallery exists in the absence of a similar classification of Western. As in all colonial endeavors, the Eurocentric experience is framed as a norm, as universal, thus in no need of defining or explaining.